I don't know what I was exactly expecting the new Williams to look like, but I didn't expect it to look like this. Very, very different. Um... I, th I, 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 I rate the difference because F1 teams are usually a little bit dull. They've obviously got brand guidelines that they stick to. So a lot of the times the deliveries are evolutions of one, which is why I said yesterday, you know, when the Aston Martin, or rather two days ago, when the Aston Martin launched, you know, that livery maybe for some people was too plain, but we know it will evolve and probably get even better over time. The Williams team, you know, they haven't really had, I guess they've had a brand guideline of just white, basically white and a bit of blue and some black in there. And last year's livery wasn't that, inspiring it was it was pretty decent but it wasn't that crazy so i like the fact that they've gone for a very arty sort of livery you know a lot of artwork going on there as i'm looking over to my other monitor here uh, to just kind of look at it a bit more intently you know a lot of art arty vibes going on with stripes and shapes they've worked in the williams logo into the top of the engine cover and then actually you know what i really like the top of the chassis where they've got the bit of the kind of gold yellow the turquoise blue, uh, not turquoise blue, the light blue and the dark blue together. I think that looks really mean. And then I love the way they've done the nose where they've tried to obviously do that usual trick where they're using the paint to make it look like it's not such a boxy nose. Whereas it in fact is the kind of same sort of thumb nose we've been used to with Formula 1. But I really like that part of the front part of the car. The engine cover... Maybe it'll grow on me. But as a whole, actually, I really do rate the fact they've gotten very different. I, like I said, I don't know what I was expecting from a new Williams livery. I, I really maybe thought it was just going to be an evolution of what they had last year. Um, so let me know what you guys make of it in the comments below. Do you like it? Do you not? Because I feel like this one's going to be quite polarizing in terms of, you know... Maybe some people just won't like the artsy style, but I, I think I can, I appreciate it. It's like someone who's like made artier kind of mods and mod liveries for, for like, you know, the career mode and stuff like that. I do appreciate they've actually gone a bit artistic and tried to do some sort of design and not just sort of straight lines and block blocks and blocking off parts of the car. But the main thing is going to be how does this car drive? The big changes for Williams, what is it going to be uh, and how are they going to perform? Because obviously it was unfortunate that they weren't able to convert what was usually really great qualifying pace into race pace. That was the big issue. You know, Russell so many times was able to drag that car into Q2, have fantastic qualifying days. I'm thinking back to, you know, the very first, uh, you know, rounds of the season, you know, Austria in the in the wet doing a mega job showing that yeah, how good of a driver he is individually. You know, Latifi, he, he's just there, isn't he? He needs to really, you know, buck up and pull up his socks if, uh, if I'm to be convinced that he kind of deserves to be there apart from just his backing, basically, with with his sponsors for, for the Williams team. But Russell, again, it's a season where, obviously, yep, yeah, he probably maybe wanted to end up in a Mercedes car. He's going to have to firm it and be in a Williams for at least one more year. But I'm sure he's going to put himself in the shop window and do what he does best, as what he what he did last year for many, many points of the season, was just do a great job in quali, try and drag the most out of that car in the race. Obviously, he did have a massive mistake uh, at, at, what was it, uh, the uh, Imola GP. Uh, it, but, you know, you, you have those. You have those high-profile mistakes and you learn from them. So for this season, for him, as a preview for his season, I guess, it's just doing more of the same, really, and just showing Mercedes that he's professional he's not going to make a fuss that he's in a Williams car he's just going to get on with it and do the best job they can in terms of Williams it's it's a case that they need to try and turn that qualifying pace into race pace if they can do that I genuinely think they can score so, you know, multiple points, maybe, at some points of the season when there's crazier races, they need to be there. That was the issue also in race like Monza last season. Russell was saying, you know, in the team radio, they should have been there to grab some points. How do they not when you had a race where Gasly was on the podium with Stroll in, in science? They've got to be getting points in those kind of wacky races. So to do that, they need a good race car, not just a qualifying car. So big question marks about that. They've retained, obviously, it's a, it's, a, it's a, you know, from last season, every car has retained what they look like. It looks like they've mostly changed and spent tokens perhaps on the front area of the car and also the side pod configuration. We've seen that's a big, big part of the side pod configuration because, you know, that, you know, it's, it's right in the middle of the car. It's where just behind all the barge wall bits and the kind of end plate bits, it's a very important part to try and get as much airflow around the car whilst also satisfying enough air to get into the coolers for the kind of radiators and such. And obviously we saw this last season, but it looks like maybe they got even more aggressive a bit with it, with the kind of suckering in and vacuum seal around those radiators uh, because we saw that last 
year where they went even more aggressive than Mercedes did with that kind of vacuum seal. And they've gone even harder with that, changing the, uh, around. And it looks like they've gone for an even higher configuration, it would seem, on the inlet. I'm just looking at the photos here. Maybe even higher on the inlet. So kind of copying what Racing Point have done. Racing Point return, or uh, uh, sorry, Aston Martin now. Aston Martin returned to a high inlet because they actually had a high one in 2019, then went to a lower one because they copied the Mercedes car of 2019, which had the lower one. So they went lower. And then subsequently, this is a real tongue twister, Mercedes last season went to a high inlet. And so Racing Point now gone back to what they had in 2019, which is what Mercedes have now and what they had last year, which is a high inlet. And Williams have a high inlet. Uh, I, I'm not too certain how much different that is actually to last year. I actually don't have photos of last year's car. But yeah, they've gone and changed the front wing area as well which is obviously very important. A team for Williams, especially so at the back of the grid, you know, they're still playing catch up with the front aero in terms of the airflow, getting to the rest of the car, to, you know, to the barred area and then around on the kind of very important channels of the vortices on the inside face of the front tire and then onto the outside as well. But uh, in terms of the livery, yeah, I, I actually, I, the more I look at it actually, the more I like it from the front end. I really like that accent of gold yellow uh, and it looks aggressive. So hopefully it is aggressive on circuit and hopefully those changes to the side pod and front wing can be enough to try and get some race pace in there. Because if they can, I think they can genuinely try and get some points at a few races this season. But let me know what you guys make of it in the comments below. If you did enjoy the video, hit the like button. If you're new around here, do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.